Who controls America? What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are doing good. Thank you for tuning in again. My name is Dwayne. Newcomers, welcome. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate it very much. Today, let's get straight into it without any further ado. We're looking at this title right here, Who Controls America? Okay, when we think of control, what do we think about? We think about power or relationship between entities. Power is the central aspect of control, right? Where? Where does power lie in the United States of America? Well, let's look at it. So the way I'm going to tackle this is this way. Let me go full screen so you guys can see everything. Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. We're going to look at the U.S. power structure, okay? Very important uh, to begin with, right? Before we go into the second point, which is what group controls the power structure, right? And then finally, we're going to look at how the control group, the group that controls the power structure, how the control group controls the, po the power structure, okay? Or how were they able to? Okay. Or how are they able to? So that's what we're going to look at. So we're going to start with the US power structure. Okay. So we want to find out who controls America. So we have to find out, first of all, where does power lie in America? Where are the institutions or centers of power in America? Because that has to be identified first, right? So let's start with a basic definition of structural power, right? Power structure, reverse the word, we have structural power, which is a very interesting thing because what structural power implies is that we're looking at a system, right? So it's a system. It's not just something just there. It's actually a system. It's a system to decide, as Susan Strange, the British scholar there says, to decide how things shall be done. The power to shape frameworks within which states relate to each other, relate to people, or relate to corporate enterprises. So structural power, the reason why now we have structural, we say structural power, okay, is because let me just see you show my face a little bit. So structural power is meaning a system. And therefore, it means that the people in the system, they will grow old, they'll die, they'll leave, but the system still continues. The system still continues. You can think of government. I mean, government is one of the longest running systems, right? Uh, people die, people leave government, whatever, whatever. But government still continues to function. Of course, some people will say it doesn't function at all, but you know what I mean? It still functions, it can still hire people, and the things that government do on a daily basis still continues to be done. So it's a system. It's, it, this is the key thing to understand with power. Okay. Now, let's go back to here and move on. So what is this United States power structure? You know, what is the system in the United States? Well, let's look at it. The United States power structure. We have the executive and military branch. And I put the military together with the presidential, with the, sorry, with the executive branch, because the president is, as the note says there at the bottom there, the president of the United States is the commander in chief of the armed forces and forms military policy with the Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, both federal executive departments acting as the principal organs by which mili military policy is carried out. Okay, so I put them both in there together, you know, the executive and the military. What else do we have? We have the Supreme Court, which is known as the judicial branch, right? Then we have Congress or the legislative branch, right? The Senate and the House of Representatives. Now, in our textbooks, it will stop there, but I'm going to add a fourth power, and I'm going to say the financial branch, okay? Uh, because, 
well, you have the Federal Reserve System, which does operate independently, right? It has it, 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 it even though the president uh, appoints the chairman of the reserve, it still has its own independent functions that are separate from these other three institutions. And it's very powerful because obviously you're looking at the banking system, right? So I think it's important to highlight that in addition to the other three. And that's why I put it there. So that's the United States power stru structure. So bam, we've identified the United States power structure. So the next thing is what group controls the power structure, right? What group controls the power structure? So as you can see there, former President Jimmy Carter made a statement. I've highlighted it in sort of like an orange color there. The United States is now an oligarchy with unlimited political bribery due to the Citizens United versus FEC ruling, which effectively removed limits on donations to political candidates. Wall Street spent a record $2 billion trying to influence the 2016 United States elections. So this is a former president, right? Not me. This is a former president who is saying that the United States is now an oligarchy oligarchy, and he's basing it on the Citizens United versus FEC ruling. So that's a very important ruling because let me just uh, show my face here. Uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, so that's a very, very important ruling. So let's hear from the mouth of Jimmy Carter himself. Okay. Uh, okay. The political principles, for example, our Supreme Court has now said, you know, unlimited money in politics. It seems a violation of principles of democracy. In the minute or so we have left, your thoughts on that? It violates the essence of, of what made America a great country in its political system. Uh, now it's just an oligarchy with, a, with unlimited political bribery being the essence of getting the nominations for, pres for president or the elected president. And the same thing applies to governors and U.S. senators and, and Congress members. So now we've just seen a complete subversion of our political system uh, as a payoff to major contributors who want and expect and sometimes get uh, favors for themselves after the election is over. Yeah, it's a sad commentary on Okay, and that's, it is a sad commentary. And that's, uh, let's go back here. So that's really important. So let me just break down why the Citizens United versus FEC ruling, and I believe that was 2010, why that has made the former president say that we live in an oligarchy. So with that ruling, what happens now is that these sort of super PACs can be formed by people unaffiliated with any of the presidential campaigns. In other words, you and I can set up a PAC through a nonprofit organization, and we can support, let's say in the upcoming 24 election, we decide that, hey, we're gonna support Biden or Trump, what, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but let's just say uh, I wanna support both of them, or we wanted to support both of them. We can set up a PAC, and as long as we don't have any communication, any deals or any interference with the actual Biden campaign or the Trump campaign, we can create our own pack and do our own advertising and promotion for whatever candidate we like. Okay. And guess what? Unlimited amount of money. And number two, because they are set up as 502, uh, not for profits you don't have to declare or reveal who the donors are who the supporters are and that obviously what that has done is that now has taken off the transparency layer for our elections and then obviously as you see there it's stated that since then we've had record spending what is known as dark money 
outside money, unknown money. We don't know who gave the money. And you have record spending of this dark money in elections. I believe the 2020 election cost was about $7 billion. I think it's the largest. It may even be more than $7 billion. Um, but it was quite a lot. And now, therefore, this oligarchy is able to control. Now, first of all, before we go on, what is an oligarchy? Let's take a look at this real quick. So an oligarchy, as you can see there underlined in red, is a form of power structure in which power rests with a small number of people. Okay, and this is the key point to understand, a small number of people. That's what an oligarchy is, okay? It is a form of power structure. We've already defined the power structure, the people who decide how things get done. Remember that quote from the beginning? In which power rests with a small number of people. Let's read a little more. Let me just go full screen so uh, you can see this as clearly as possible. So, uh, let me make sure I got my way here. So that's this. So we define the power structure, I told you, remember to decide how things can be done, how things should be done. And then now we have throughout histories, when you read there at the bottom there, throughout history, oligarchies have often been tyrannical, relying on public obedience or oppression to exist. Now, this is very interesting because you've got to admit that that's what's happening today. You know, um, that is what's happening today. Uh, right now in America, if you come out against the, if you don't toe the line, if you come out against the narrative that is either being put out by the government, the politicians, or whoever, if you don't toe the line nowadays, you can lose your job, you can lose your platform, you can, you can really lose a lot, and people have lost a lot. You know, and we're seeing it right now. This is November 2023. We're seeing it right now with a lot of people who are coming out to even say something about the Palestinians in Gaza that, hey, you know, maybe this this is a bit tough. You know, the bombing of, of innocent people there is not good. The minute you say that, uh, you, you get in trouble, okay? And this is very interesting. As you can see there, it says Aristotle pioneered the use of the term as meaning ruled by the rich. So that's interesting. Of which another term commonly used today is plutocracy. And look what it says after that. In the 20th century, Robert McKells developed the theory that democracies like large organizations tend to turn into oligarchies. He suggests that the necessary division of labor in large organizations leads to the establishment of a ruling class, mostly concerned with protecting their own property. Okay? So, what is a plutocracy? A plutocracy is a society that is ruled or controlled by people of great wealth or income. Okay? So very interesting. So an oligarchy is a society that is ruled by a small number of people. And a plutocracy is a society that is ruled or controlled by people of great wealth and income. Okay, I think we're beginning to see what America is. And again, I didn't say it. And here's another former president, right? Franklin D. Roosevelt. Considered a warning. Let's read what he says there. The liberty of a democracy is not safe if the people tolerate the growth of private power to a point where it becomes stronger than their democratic state itself. Very important. That in essence is fascism, ownership of a government by an individual, by a group, or by any other controlling private power. Does Okay, does that hit home? In 1935 in the United States, of all the corporations reporting from every part of the nation, one-tenth of one percent of them owned 52 percent of the assets of all of them. This was back in 1935. 
almost 100 years ago. What's happened since then? Well, let's move on to... Sorry about that. Let's move on. Twenty twelve, the United States in twenty twelve, the six largest banks. This is roughly ten years ago. Uh, in the six largest banks, those banks right there on the right hand side had nine point three trillion in assets, equivalent to sixty percent of the U.S. GDP and ninety three percent of the total trading revenue of all banks. Those six banks right there. So you can see this. This accumulation of, of capital in the hands of a smaller, smaller, smaller subset of the population, which is what an oligarchy is. Okay. Uh, okay, someone might say, well, that was 10 years ago. Well, let's move up and look right up to 2018, the real average tax after tax and transfer income in 2018 dollars. You can see the bottom 90% of people the third column along there, the 50 to 90 percent, the, the bottom 90 percent of people, you can see that really since 1970, the wages haven't really gone up by much. You know, um, certainly in the bottom 50, it's, it's hardly anything. You know, the money that people get were getting in 2018 was pretty much the same as what people were getting in, in 1970. Then if you look at the top 10% and the top 1% and the top 0.1% and the top 0.1%, you can see this, basically this transfer of wealth to fewer and fewer people. And I think this represents the, uh, this accumulation of wealth into the hands of a small number of people. I think this illustrates very clearly how that was happening. Here it is. This is during the pandemic only, right? So just during the pandemic, if you see how the rich have gotten richer, a lot of people say that during the pandemic was the largest wealth transfer from the bottom to the top in American history. And these are some of the numbers that show you. Look at the billionaire wealth, 70%. Okay. Corporate profits, 50%. I mean, this is during the pandemic. As you can see, wages, really, really low consumer prices. It's, it's, wages are hardly keeping up with the consumer prices. But you can see clearly through this that the wealth is being accumulated by a few people at the top. And we've already defined an oligarchy and a plutocracy. It's a small group of people who are generally the wealthiest people. And this is what we see here with the United States of America. America is an oligarchy and a plutocracy. Okay. So how the control group controls the power structure. So we have to go into what is called as elite theory or elitist theory. Um, and this is, as you can see there, most political power is held by a relatively small and wealthy group of people sharing similar values and interests. This is the key point. And mostly coming from relatively similar privileged backgrounds. The key word there is privileged. And this is something that I think a lot of us have to come to grips with and understand. And then let's reading uh, right there at the bottom, an interlocking of corporate and foundation directorates, old school ties and frequent social interaction tend to link together and facilitate coordination between the top leaders in business, government, civic organizations, educational, culture, cultural establishments, and the mass media, right? Basically, the full aspect of society, right? This is, an, uh, this is known as the elite theory or the elitist theory. When you talk about the elites, this is who we're talking about. And these are the people who are controlling. 
Let's go more. The power elite can effectively dictate the main goals. You remember the definition of the power structure? The people who decide how things are to be done. Okay? And they dictate the main goals for all important government policy making, as well as dominate the activities of the major mass media and educational cultural organizations in society. This is very important. There's no question about it, that particularly in terms of the mass media, we are definitely dominated. It's big, it's big media. And it's a few companies that dominate the landscape for the mass, uh, for, for mass media by virtue of their control over the economic resources of the major business and financial organizations in the country. And then their power is seen as based most fundamentally on their personal economic resources, and especially on their positions within the top management of the big corporations. Okay. Now, it's interesting at this point now to define what is a business group because remember we're deciding what group controls how do they control a business group is a group of companies that does business in different markets under common administrative or financial control whose members are linked by relations of interpersonal trust on the basis of similar personal ethnic or commercial background a business group is a network of firms that regularly collaborate over a long period of time so for a business group to be defined as an oligarchy or a plutocracy has to satisfy these three conditions. The owners are the largest private owners in the country. It possesses sufficient political power to promote its own interests. Now, number two is what we talked about earlier with the so-called dark money that has come into politics, money that nobody knows who, you know, who gave it. Right. And the dark money aspect of politics now, because of Citizens United versus the FEC, that is an overwhelming amount of the pot that the political, the pot of the political purse represents, overwhelming majority of the money. And finally, three owners control multiple businesses, which intensely coordinate their activities. There's also a term called corporatocracy. And a corporatocracy, as you can see there, is an economic, political, and judicial system, right up here, controlled by business corporations or corporate interests. Okay? The concept has been used in explanation of bank bailouts. This is why, the, you know, whenever the large banks fail, they're usually bailed out. Why? Because our system is controlled by corporations. They're controlled by these very people. Okay. Uh, so, you know, too big to fail, just can't fail. You know, excessive pay for CEOs is another indi indicator that we are controlled by corporations or corporate interests. The expectation of national treasuries, people, and natural resources are all ways in which we can see that we are controlled in America by business corporations, private corporate interests. Uh, this is one of the big critics of the global globalization. You know, the fact that power then is being removed from the nation state and going into international unelected bodies, right? Uh, unfair lending practices, yes, and all these, uh, all this points to who controls power in America. So America is an oligarchy, it is a plutocracy, it is a corporatocracy, and a business group. The American elite 
are a small, wealthy social business group of interlocking private corporations and foundations intensively securing their own interests. So what I presented here is not going to be a big surprise to anybody, especially Americans. Most Americans are very much aware of this, the ruling class, the elites, uh, and the fact that they are controlling. But what I fail, or rather what I think a lot of people fail to understand is that the American elite only uh, set up corporations, foundations, other types of business groups to intensively secure their own interests. And I think that's very important to understand because they, their interest is different from the interests of the masses of the American people, you know, and really, in my opinion, those are the, the that's the real division in America between the elites and everybody else. That that's really where the real focus should shift. And that's certainly where the, the brunt of the antagonism really exists. Most, for example, most Americans, through many polls that have been done, most Americans support free health care. Most, most Americans support um, uh, uh, you know, a simpler tax system, you know, most Americans support that. Most Americans do not support war, you know, yet we have a very complex ta tax system. We're in many wars and all the rest of it. Why? Because the people who control the power structure in America are the few elites, the ruling class at the top, and their interests are very different from the rest of us, right? For example, let's look at war. Well, they have a group of companies that produce weapons, you know, like any other business. If you're producing something, for you to continue to stay in business, you have to sell that product so that you can produce and produce and produce. So war, for example, the threat of war even, is a very good incentive for these companies to continue to produce and produce these weapons and sell them. You know, um, that, and that's just one example. It goes right down the list in terms of this difference, the separation between the ruling class or the American elites, whatever term you want to use, and the rest of the United States of America, you know. Wages is another example. Wages have, I've shown you the graph earlier of how wages have, have really not gone up since 1970. You know, I mean, it's gone up, but very little, uh, uh, you know. And then when you add the inflation, you, the inflation, when you add the value of the US dollar that has been going down steadily since 1970, really, you know, you're pretty much making the same amount of money if you're in the bottom 50% for sure of, of this country. You're pretty much making the same money that you were making in 1970. Whereas when you look at the people at the top, it's an astronomical exponential growth. And that again is another indicator of who controls the power structure in the United States of America. So, yes. This is, uh, this is very interesting. What else do we have here? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and this is it. America is a fascist state. And again, I believe it, yes, but I'm not the only one saying it. I showed you already that the former president of the country, FDR, uh, uh, said, said it. He actually used the term fascism. I showed you the quote earlier. So America is a fascist state. We live in a fascist state. And I want people to think about that for a minute, you know, um, a fascist state. Remember, it's the, it's, it's, it's this oligarchy, plutocracy, corporatocracy, and a business group. The corporatocracy is the key 
element that really makes it a fascist a fascist state. Okay, guys, uh, I think I've got most of it in there. Let's just go back to our opening slide here. So I've just told you who controls America, basically. So yes, I'd love to hear your comments below. Please leave them. Uh, let me hear what you guys think, who you think control America, how you think the power structure is, what it means to you. And uh, I'll look forward to hearing those comments. Thank you all very much. I appreciate you for watching. See you in the next episode.